Hey everyone, welcome to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be taking another look at ZIM Integrated Shipping Services stock, also known by the ticker symbol ZIM, Z-I-M. So, as all of you probably have already guessed, uh, ZIM reported its earnings this past week, and unfortunately they missed their earnings targets. So, what does this mean for the stock going forward? Um, how are things looking for Zim in the context of the overall economy? That's what uh, we'll, we'll get into in this video. So first and foremost, um, taking a look at the stock chart, we could see this is the past six months. Hasn't really looked that great for Zim. It's been, we did have that peak earlier in the year in the spring when it uh, exceeded $90, and it's just been downtrending ever since. And so we could see, if we look more recently, in the past week, we did, it was very interesting. So they reported their earnings. Um, the stock immediately fell about 7% on the day when they reported. Then, the next day, we did have a, a bit of an upswing over here. We could see we were in the uh, mid-40s. We went up to back into the 50s, so it looked like we may be just making back all those gains. And then on Friday, the whole market basically dumped and Zim along with it. And so here we are back in the upper 40s. And so if you look at the chart, um, you could see it does look like you, we may be making lower lows and lower highs, but it's really hard to tell because I feel like there was just so much volatility in the market in general this week that I wouldn't uh, personally read too deeply into that chart movement, although, you know, I'm not a financial advisor, this isn't financial advice, but I think it's more important to actually look at uh, what Zim reported in terms of making a um, an educated determination about uh, how the stock price might play out. So if we look, I mean, not the, not the best headline, but um, so Zim was down, and as we could see, we were still growing. Uh, Zim reported second quarter sales growth of 44% year over year to $3.43 billion. I mean, it sounds great, but it missed uh, the consensus of $3.62 billion. So we missed sales growth by a bit. The EPS was 11.07 for the quarter, missing the consensus of 12.84 for earnings per share, which another miss. And um, carried volume in the second quarter of 856,000 TEUs, which is down 7% year over year. Um, the gross margin and TEU, for those of you that don't uh, understand, that's a, a, a unit in container shipping for uh, essentially how much cargo they could fit on the ship. The gross margin expanded by 219 uh, BPS to 53.5%, fine. The adjusted EBITDA was 2.1 billion. The margins expanded from, to 61% from 56%. So there is some good data here. Um, the company is continuing to grow. They're continuing to be profitable. Even though they missed their earnings this quarter, um, they are still making money and you know, in terms of why they missed their earnings and um, how much money we could expect uh, or, you know, for them to make going forward, I thought this was interesting. It was a good breakdown on what exactly is happening. And it really highlights the, the point that uh, the spot rates have really negatively impacted Zim. That's what was so beneficial to Zim in the prior quarters when they were just blowing off the charts their earnings but this quarter as these spot rates have gone down it's been it really has been negative for Zim so as we see right so the net income was 1.3 up for 50 percent which I mean if that sounds amazing but down 22 percent from Q1 of 2022 so not, not the best, but to our point, when you look at uh, Zim in the context of other shipping companies, that has kind of worked to Zim's advantage at a time when these spot rates were doing great. You could see 
compared to uh, Maersk, which is the biggest shipping company. So Maersk's spot exposure is down 29%. So that's kind of insulated uh, Zim, or, or insulated Maersk a bit, where Zim's exposure is uh, higher than that. So Zim, its quarterly 22 uh, rate was 3,596 per TEO much higher than Maersk's uh, in that same time, time frame. But now this is the issue. Spot rates continue to decline. So, and Zim has previously said, Zim has a ton of exposure to trans-Pacific trade. So Zim is, some, is a stock that's going to be uh, highly impacted by any kind of China lockdowns or any kind of trade tensions in the Pacific or whatnot, because they have a ton of exposure um, in that regard. And we can see here, Zim had previously stated that rates on its annual Trans-Pacific contracts had more than doubled year over year, which is incredible, but that's because we know last year we had, and we still have all these uh, supply chain worries in terms of our Pacific trade partners. I also, I'm glad that the chart includes this. We'll look at this at a bit more in depth in a second. Some people in the comments, and I appreciate all your comments, by all means, keep commenting, had pointed out that the FBX may be a better measure of uh, shipping rates than the Baltic Dry Index. So we could see here, the FBX has been steadily declining. You can see it was holding strong all the way January, February, and then in May and June it's been going down and it's been going down uh, consistently, which not good for Zim, not good for Zim. Um, but I thought despite all the negative news, I thought it was uh, worthwhile pointing out what the CEO said over here because I think he makes like a very valid point in the sense that he acknowledges you know, that they have seen a decline in freight rates, is particularly trans-Pacific freight rates over the past weeks. However, they still remain elevated and are therefore still very profitable. And we could uh, look at that. Let's look at that more in a second. But first, just to finish off this uh, article, because I think it was a good article, it also points to the fact that the number of ships in Zim's fleet has grown from 96 in January of 2021 to 149 currently. And these additions, almost all of them are additions from the charter market, which has Zim paying premium rates for multi-year leases on those ships. So it just reinforces the point we're making that when shipping rates are high and shippers are making money, Zim is going to make an absolute killing. But when shipping rates go down and they're not making as much money, Zim is going to be hurt even more than some of the other competitors like Starbulk, where I did had done a video on that one. That one had great earnings. That one, uh, you know, blew it out of the charts because they weren't taking on all, all this extra exposure. And on the same note, when the shipping industry uh, is going to skyrocket and take off, they might not do as well as a, a company like Zim. But going back, because I think this is important, this um, Freight Baltic Index, let me uh, put this in context. So let's look at that index in a little bit more depth, because uh, I do think it is uh, worthwhile just for a point of context. So if we scroll down over here, we could see, okay, here are the the FBX rates, you could see from all the way from 2017 up until really 2021, it was basically stagnant, you know, it was uh, all within a range between one and $2,000. Then in January, 2021, boom, skyrocketed to the moon, one point going above $11,000, which is an incredible increase. And we saw that last year, we saw Zim absolutely destroying their earnings, as we were mentioning even earlier in this video. And now what's happened is that we've steadily gone down. We haven't fallen off a cliff, but we're just steadily declining. Although we're still elevated, that was the CEO's point, is that even though we've we're not at $11,000 anymore, we're still above $5,000. 
which means Zim is still gonna just be making just be making money, which is great. And so, I mean, the way I look at this stock is that it's a stock that, you know, it might not jump to $90 again tomorrow. But the good thing about Zim is, as we've said, they're just making a boatload of revenue. They're making so much money. And so what are they doing with that money? Well, a lot of it, they're paying in dividends. So they have another dividend of, I believe, $4.75 that's coming up on uh, the ex-dividend date is August 29th. So not next week, but the following Monday, I believe. I'm really curious to see if we have a bit of a run-up leading up to that ex-dividend date, because the one thing that Zim has proven is that they're willing to pay the, that revenue to their shareholders. That's what they did with that $17 dividend uh, or earlier. That's what they've done uh, earlier in the summer. They paid a, low, a lesser dividend, and now they're going to pay another dividend, uh, you know, in a few weeks, in, the, in September, going ex-dividend on 829. So as far as I'm concerned, like, yeah, Zim is not, Zim may have peaked, but it's not falling off a cliff. It may have peaked, but now it's just going to take that revenue it's generating and pay its shareholders, which to me sounds like a pretty good deal. You know, and especially as we've seen in prior uh, videos, they have been building their business and shipping is a super cyclical business. So, you know, right now it may be uh, fall, shipping rates may be down a bit, but they're going to go up. You know, they're going to go further down. They're going to go further up. It's a cyclical business. And a lot, as I said, is going to depend on what China does and what uh, the trade situation looks like, what happens geopolitically with Taiwan and whatnot. So there's a lot of um, uncertainty with a stock like Zim because you have all those factors that go into it. But as far as I'm concerned, it seems like a decent play just to kind of hold on get paid these dividends, and then just see what happens in the world if you want to, you know, add more or deduct. But again, I'm not a financial advisor. These are all just my uh, opinions, um, not being a financial advisor. But let me know what you think. What are you doing with your SIM shares? Are you buying more on this dip? Are you selling out? Are you just holding? Are you going to just collect that dividend and hold on? Let me know in the comments what you're doing, and I'll catch you in the next one.